This is a virtual presentation for the 2010 International Conference on the Constructed Environment held on November 17th to 19th, 2010 in Venice, Italy. The conference stream is in Building Processes and the title of this presentation is called Ice Cycle, a Case Study in Thermotectonic Performance. My name is Matt Burgermaster. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Architecture at New Jersey Institute of Technology. Recently, a handful of progressive efforts to expand the capacity of architecture's building envelope beyond instrumentalizing models of technical efficiency have, in so doing, also aimed to broaden our current definition of performance-based design. Such calls f have advocated for a reconsideration of architecture's capacity to engage and affect the built environment in more intelligent, synthetic, and creative ways than normative professional practices of sustainability and high-performance design currently do. These efforts, made by a number of prominent architects and educators, have consistently focused on the envelope as a key site of disciplinary activity and innovation. Describing what is at stake in the design of the building envelope for this particularly contemporary predicament, Alejandro Zeropolo, in his essay, The Politics of the, en of the Envelope, a Political Critique of Materialism, notes, the previous theories of the building envelope have not been capable of, of directly relating the technical and physical properties of envelopes to their political, social, and psychological effects. A more intricate design of the limit be between private and public increases the contact surface between both realms, like a radiator adopting an intricate form to increase the surface of heat exchange with air. In this influential critique of architecture's lack of an effective model for correlating the discipline's technical means with its non-technical effects, a dynamic relationship between form and its performance is reimagined in terms of a thermodynamic exchange. In this conception, matter, and by extension buildings, is affected by the dynamic change of energy within a given system, and reciprocally, its characteristics and configurations can act as a generative catalyst for such behavior. As such, Zerapolo's advocacy for for this greater perform performative capacity suggests that the envelope should not only literally modulate environmental flows, but that architecture itself and its engagement within a broader range of contexts might also behave in a thermodynamic manner. As the conditions of contemporary design and construction continue to evolve, a particular consequence of the recent digital and ecological turns is that architecture's primacy has been reassigned away from the static tectonics of building construction to the dynamic flows of virtual information and ecological flux that pass through them. With increasing demands placed on the discipline of architecture to demonstrate why it is relevant when the activities of constructing and operating buildings consume so much resources, new approaches are needed to that reconfigure our conventional understanding of the relationship of matter and energy. Despite the ubiquity of well-intended of well mandates for an integrated whole building approach to contemporary design, many of such efforts curiously tend to accessorize the building as a whole with high-tech gadgetry as a way to meet performance criteria that are not otherwise met by the building itself. Instead, alternative strategies are needed that favor the distributed effectiveness of architecture's interconnected whole over the singular efficiencies of its discrete parts. More imaginative integration of architecture's tectonic and thermodynamic concerns is needed to maximize architecture's performance with such minimal means. This thermotectonic strategy is described in the following design research case study. This case study, called the Ice Cycle House, mobilizes its building envelope as the site of a co-determination of tectonic assembly and thermodynamic flows. These interactions are catalyzed by the environmental phase change dynamics op operating within the envelope surface. As an intricate space of exchange, the building's attenuated and thickened perimeter enables not only the increased technical performance now commonly expected of sustainable design, but alternative patterns of architectural performance. As such, the building's, the building's envelope demonstrates an alternative strategy for harvesting natural resources that distributes their latent phase change properties of snow to ice to water as a catalyst of novel material behaviors and performative effects. This project is a single-family residential prototype designed for a typical suburban lot in Buffalo, New York. It's 1,200 square foot footprint consists of two 12 by 50 prefabricated building modules that are ganged and offset to increase its exterior surface area and its capacity to act as an interface between interior and exterior environments. 
The building envelope consists of two ubiquitous accessory building components, a domestic roof drain and roof vent, which are constructed of off-the-shelf materials and processed via digital fabrication techniques. These ordinary details are reimagined by distributing their functions within the hybrid components of the ice cycle house's interdependent adaptive envelope system. No longer treated as monofunctioning technical accessories, the performative capacities of drainage and ventilation are instead reinvented and designed to address a broad range of concerns associated with their operation in northern climates with high amounts of snowfall and buffalo as a particular site of such engagement. Here, water and air flows are not only more efficiently managed, but their thermotectonic redistribution enables a more effective responsiveness of the building whole to larger material, energy, and human resources. The envelope consists of two assembly types. The first is the pipe cycle assembly, which is an open jointed rain screen system that arrays individual drain pipes along the low side of the building's pitch roofs. Instead of relying on traditional single point drainage via gutter and drain pipe, roof drainage is here distributed across the entire building envelope to more effectively harvest natural resources and their latent energy potentials. A variant of traditional rain collection systems, it also retains snow mass as a thermal blanket, prevents icicle formation, and displays water flow and its effects inside out along the building's surface. This component-based strategy consists of off-the-shelf copper drain pipes whose shafts are strategically custom cut to display the internal behavior of oxidizing copper and to modulate uh, light and views to and from the interior. Pipe distribution, their number, size, and frequency turns this revealing of matter and its energy into a pattern reminiscent of the ice cycle formations that the pipe cycle assembly aims to eliminate. Across this hydrological field, the architecture is always in a transitional state of phase change. The detailing of each individual component is in response to localized differences within the whole system, such that a single drain pipe alternatively acts like a drain and wall enclosure and window screen while looking like a drain pipe and structural component and icicle. The flake, flake vent assembly, while motivated by similarly performative desires, takes a different approach to the design of its constituent parts. Located on the high sides of the pitched roofs, it consists of an array of translucent acrylic wall panels whose overall surface effect is reflective, seamless, and graphic. These floor height cartridges harvest solar radiation retain air as a thermal buffer, and selectively redistribute it into the roof cavity and interior. Operable vents allow this assembly's internal air chambers to alternatively act as a trome wall and solar chimney. The cartridge's connection details are seamlessly concealed, while the vents are articulated as their surrogate joints. The wall surfaces are digitally etched with archival photomicrographs of the first known um, uh, images taken of snow crystals, and are treated with a thermochromic plastic adhesive whose sensitivity to temperature variation produces a changing color gradient. Across this thermal image field, the flake-shaped flake flake vents are cut and ventilation functions redistributed. In both the pipe cycle and flake, va flake vent assemblies, distributed details catalyze the architecture's phase-changing performance as a dynamic patterning of material and energy flows. Traditionally binary distinctions between function and decoration, assembly and surface, joint and vent, tectonic and thermodynamic, and the performative roles of each are immersed within the phase changing effects of their assembly. With such dynamic distribution and phasing, varying degrees of difference and flux within the thermotectonic system is contingent, subject to both material and energy constraints, and as such, more responsive to them. A domestic roof drain and vent are rarely thought about by the general public unless they need to be repaired or replaced, and are even more rarely taken as objects of design by the design professions. They are two of the many small parts of our, many, of our poorly performing residential construction market, whose fix is usually cheap, disposable, and does not consider the broader systemic reasons for the part's ineffectiveness in the first place. The ice cycle house takes the failure of these ordinary details not only as an actual technical problem to be solved, but as symptomatic of contemporary architecture's often limited approach to performance-based design work. 
By linking detail to envelope and tectonic to thermodynamic, it offers a more performative interface between architecture and the larger technological, environmental, and human systems within which it's situated. This approach demonstrates the possible robustness of the ordinary and the functional, and small, within performative design practices.